Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode, we're going to be doing some team building. That's right, another generic gallery is on its way this episode. Talk a little bit about news this week and then answer some listener questions. This is episode 438. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how okay. six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Hey, Google, back some Let this happen because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Alley for Hero is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know, maxing, relaxing. Uh, that's it. Acting all cool? Nope. Playing some doing D-ball? That. Outside the school? No? Okay, none of that? All right. Problem. My baseball uh, Marvel. Are me, Calder. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, I've seen your vertical. Yeah. You're so tall. You could, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you get back need, on. You don't need to get back on the court. For baseball, I don't play outfield. Oh, it's true. You're a batter. Yeah. Batter all day long, this guy. <laughs> uh, how's Marvel Snap? Let's do our Marvel Snap check-in. Oh, at, man. At of the show it's not great for me either i almost don't want to do it um so i have no deck in particular i'm running i'm bouncing all over the place i'm floundering i don't really have a deck i love deck i want to love uh is this age of ultron build i have i do think it's fun rundown it's ant-man squirrel girl sunspot nightcrawler armor scarlet witch she can be interchanged mr fantastic storm captain america kazar blue marvel and ultron Point of the deck is to to flood the board with Ultron drones. That's your end play. I want to put a Captain America or an Ant Man in one location by themselves. You want to put the Kazar, Blue Marvel, Ultron, and then something else in one location as well. The thing is, is that typically they don't kill Monger at the end. They're gonna kill Monger somewhere in the middle of the game. So you still want to put out your normal one cost cards, and if you know. If you just leave those out and you never have to bring in your Ultron drones, that's a fine. That's fine too. That's still a win condition. That's still good if they never kill Monger. Your goal is to weed out a kill Monger early, so that way when Ultron drops all his one cost drones, they don't die. Storm is there to shut down a location because eventually you'll drop Ultron and his drones are going to flock there anyways, getting the buffs from Kazar Blue Marvel. The team needs Patriot. So it, it's like kind of winning sometimes. It needs Patriot to be effective to give all those drones a plus two. That way they'll be plus four between that Kazar and Blue Marvel. Um, and then it'd be 20 at each location, plus maybe a cap at one location, an Ant-Man at the other location, or a Mr. Fantastic somewhere. But it's still really fun. I really like it. I'm just, I'm super enjoying the build, but it just, it needs Patriot. I am at level, I was at level 84. That was my highest this week. But like I said, I've been floundering these past two days. So I'm at level 72. With the season ending in, what, two days, probably not going to hit infinite. My goal is to at least get to 90 for some 500 gold. That's that's my Marvel snap. I'm ready for a new season. I'm ready to be on, yeah. I guess. I just want Patriot, and I'm not going to have fun playing this game until I get him. <laughs> I'm excited. Basically. I'm excited for a new season because um, I've been done with this season's chapters for a while now. And uh, yeah. also... Um, Let's see. I'm at 71 nice. or for the season pass, which oh, means if I were to buy the season pass, I get all the like the season caches that I didn't collect. But after after level 50, it's all the free ones again. So like everything after level 50. So from 50 to 72, they're all free. They're just like the caches, which are garbage. They don't have variants or anything cool in there. Um, <laughs> so the things I'm missing from not paying $10 for the season pass is probably like about a thousand gold, which yeah, um, two different Miles Moraleses, which I'm actually kind of bummed. I'm not giving getting those two different uh, Spider Woman's, which I just pulled one, so I don't need the variant one. Uh, I'm missing two mystery variants that I could have picked up, a handful of credits, 
some other like random stuff, a variant for carnage. So like some, yeah, just a bunch of like random stuff. Um, yeah. The Miles Morales is like, I don't know if I can get him outside the season pass. I'm hoping that I can, like maybe in the future when that's not an option, like I'll be able to get him because he is integral to like a move deck. He's actually really good. Yeah, I would say he is good. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll do my rundown. So I am currently diamond. I am 60 right now. Yeah. I need to get to six or I need to get to 70 to get vi- vibranium, which is the last one I really care about. Cause that gives me a mystery variant. And I have not been picking up a lot of variants, which are just for anyone that does not care about this game. Variants are just alternate like card art. So there's like more cartoonish ones. They're more classic ones. There's like splash page ones. Uh, there's yeah. What like pixel art. There's uh, yeah, pixel art. all the Scotty Young variants. There's like some variants that they like call like weird stuff. Like there's that. Um, what is he? Uh, Jeez, he's a four what? energy. Yes. Why can't I find him? Oh, Warpath. There's the Luchador the version of. Oh, Warpath. I love that yeah. one, dude. It's so cool. There's the baseball version of. Bucky. Elbow off top rope, Warpath. So sick. He looks really cool. So like that's the thing that I'm actually trying to collect currently is just random options like that. Um, but no, the the deck that I'm currently running, the one that I'm uh, having the most fun with is this Infinite deck. So Infinite, I don't believe, is a real character in any other medium. Is he uh, not? Okay, because I haven't seen him anywhere. I'm like, who no, is this person? He looks like the Norman Reedus from the whatever video game that was. He does. Yeah, he's got a bubble like, head. Thing. Yeah, walking around, carrying like a baby. and Norman Reedus ladders. and the funky baby fetus. Love yeah, that whatever game. that game was. Um, he looks like that, but he's a 6 energy 20 attack, which is the highest like one for one printed um, card. The only thing is you can't play him if you played a card last turn. So you basically have to skip turn five or depending on like what's going on, you have to skip turn four. Um, Either way, you have to skip a turn. So the build with him is you like use sunspot. So sunspot benefits from not playing at least one turn. Uh, He gets energy that any energy you didn't spend, he gets added to his attack uh, my current deck also has Nova. Just in case I don't pull sp- Sunspot, I can drop Nova. Sometimes I drop both because my opponent might decide to kill Monger, might decide to kill both. Um, it's also got armor to protect at least Sunspot. It has its own kill Monger to kill my own Nova, which is the only combo that I can actually do that with. Uh, I've got Storm, Cosmo, Doctor Strange. So... Doctor Strange is more so just like reshuffling certain uh, areas that I've like mispositioned or pulling Sunspot out of a bad area like late game. Uh, It's got Rhino to destroy bad locations that I don't like. It's got Enchantress to shut off like Devil Dinos and stuff. Jessica Jones and Warpath. So the last three I mentioned, Enchantress, Jessica Jones, and Warpath, those are all four energy. It has zero five energy cards because the hope is that Infinite gets pulled. And I will be reshuffling this because I just recently got Jubilee. I really want to do the Jubilee and just like a ton of big cards. <laughs> like you do like Hulk, Infinot, uh, Odin, um, yeah. America Chavez. Well, you can't have America Chavez in your hand until the sixth turn. But like you do a bunch of stuff like that, maybe like Abomination. And you just wait till turn four and really hope that she pulls in a few. Um the team that I've been running during the current day's flavor location, because currently it's the cloning vats, when you play a card here, add a copy to your hand. I went back to Devil Dino, and I've found I found uh, Devil Dino is still really fun. And I recently unlocked the collector, who every time a card is re-entered into your hand, or any time a card from outside your deck, quote-unquote outside your deck, is entered into your hand, uh, he gets more power. So with the cloning... Uh, facility location he's really stupid and it makes devil dino super easy to pop off because your deck size like your hand size just never goes below like the max so it still has moon girl a new addition is shang chi who i use to nuke other people's devil dinos or hulks or i love letting gamma the gamma lab go off and then just like turn four i kill the three hulks that they put there that's just hilarious to me that Shang Chi just kills three Hulks, um, but yeah, that I won't go into that deck. It's mostly just like 
things that let you draw cards, uh, things that benefit from you having full hands, and then a few things that are anti-tech. I've got Deathlock on there, and I'm pretty sure I only have Deathlock on there for that stupid raptor location. I hate those mm. raptors. I After stand. Uh, the ninja is rough. Ninja sucks. Central Park's okay most of the time, but... Yeah. Yeah. Raptors do suck. I I do hate the raptors. All right, guys. Not a dinosaur fan. I would be. I didn't take up two slots at one location. I will say, also recently got Morbius. Really looking forward to playing an Apocalypse deck again with uh, yeah. Morbius included now. It's actually what I've got loaded up for next, but yeah. Outside of that, yeah, it's mostly just trying to get random new cards. Um, what's your collector number at? Uh, your I'm at... A five hundred something. I'm at five fifteen. Four fifty one. So I don't remember where where like you cool have to get to enter like the new level. It's like six hundred for like zone yeah. three or whatever you call it. I did realize after getting into card tech two or whatever, instead of costing two between every like booster or whatever pack, uh it started costing four. So Oh, I was way off. I'm at 581 right now. Probably the worst part about it is that there's no more just straight up you get cards. It just it goes credits, oh, man. collector's cash, booster. We have to get to 1,000. Collector's, cash, credits, collector's cash. Get to 1,000 before yeah, you get a card. So you get the collector's card. cash up until 994. And then once okay. you get to 1,006, you get the collector's reserve. Ooh. Reserve. Ooh. So, so it contains much. mystery cards or currency. Ten bucks says it's going to be currency because. Oh, collector's thing. cash says contains mystery cards or currency. I've anyway, never once pulled a card from collector's it. reserve says the same thing, but it's gold now. Ooh, yeah, it's gold. Ooh. Yeah, the only way uh, you could be there at this point is if you play this game constantly, or if you've spent a lot of money on this game. The uh, cards I have like maxed that are like style, and I promise after this will be like done. I'm loving the pixel ones. A lot of them are give or take. Some are bad. Some are really good. I think the Captain America one is easily, and this is obviously biased, uh, is the coolest looking pixel. In my opinion, he has fire in the background. Like there's a war happening and he's like jumping. looks really cool. Mr. Fantastic looks cool. I just bought the swarm variant that's in the store right now. That's pixels. He's got his little bees and they kind of float around once they're animated. Jessica Jones is like eh, an okay pixel. I really like America Chavez's pixel. But those are all the ones I have. I also have the Chibi Onslaught, Axed Out, Rainbow Background, as well as Blue Marvel and Claw. In oh, background. I Rainbow Background by Killmonger, just because oh, it was funny. Oh, that's mean. Yeah. So we dropped on that, the fancy Killmonger on these people. He might actually be the first card that I get to, uh, like, what is it called? Um, Infinity? But you already yeah. passed Infinity. Well, yeah, I already got to, like, the, the new, like, rainbow background version but he might be the first that i get to that again it's just to see oh, what happens nice. he is one of my like my go-tos he just so funny let's <laughs> I, I know people hate him but it's so funny I, oh yeah it's the equivalent it's been, in dude. marvel snap of like vulture awk arms was where it's just like Vulturing oh you love Absolutely. all these like cheap figures i'm just gonna gobble them all up in one turn and then you do you lose like that's it yeah. you just lose in one turn All right, let's go ahead and jump into the news really quick. We got one, like, real preview this week. We finally see the U.S. Agent on the Play at Home. No, sorry, excuse me. Uh, just LE pack. It's not a Play at Home kit. It's the yeah, LE pack. The so. Release day. Release day OP. So it's really cool. I like him. He's a different U.S. agent. I will say we're a bit spoiled on John Walker's this year, so he kind of pales in comparison, but let's just get into him right now. U.S. Agent, Avengers, Dark Avengers, Latveria, Thunderbolts, and Soldier. The Doom's Avengers traits. Other friendly characters with the Avengers team ability have the Doom, uh, Minions of Doom team ability instead. So this goes from Avengers, which is when this character is given move, they get a, a move action, they get plus one speed. Now they also have, or they instead have, oh no, it's they get it in addition, excuse me. 
Whenever they kill a standard, whenever this character KOs a standard opposing character, after resolutions, heal one click on a friendly character using this team ability, which can be themselves, which is so much better than just the Avengers team ability. Yeah. So that's already a really good utility Avenger, this guide. Uh, he's got a special defense power, which is energy shield deflection and invincible is a special damage power, which is leadership. When U.S. agent uses it, if a friendly character was KO'd since your last turn, he succeeds on all results except a one. Really good. It's interesting for his leadership style, where it's keep on trucking no matter who dies, especially it's, when someone dies. The thing I love Very about this suicide is... Suicide Squad-esque leadership, honestly. It doesn't say, like, uh, a friendly standard character or anything like that, so... This would work with, like, the lantern constructs or, Ooh, ah. like, you know, the old Medusa hair. Like, anything that just, like, like is that. KO'd for whatever reason and zero points, um, you can just have, yeah, a almost guaranteed leadership. There is yeah. a chance that you don't, but... So it says his significant appearance is the John Walker U.S. Agent book that was coming out in 2020. I owned this entire book. He never did, like, the Dooms Avengers thing in that book, so that's a separate book. In this one, he, like, struggled to keep his shield alive. Every time he would, like, throw his shield or something, he just had all these shields, basically, and they would just get dunked, destroyed. He had, like, an of them or something, and he was constantly grabbing new ones. So he would throw them, like, once, and they would, like, end and break and all this. It was pretty funny, actually, that, like, this, this struggle he had. Um, but he never, like, addresses it, but it just kind of happens. You know what I mean? Like, he throws it, it breaks, he grabs a new one. He blocks a few punches. He like hits somebody. It hits a wall. It breaks in half. It's just like honest up to your struggling in this book. Uh, for the dial, he has a seventy point split. Reason you would play him at seventy as opposed to thirty five because I know thirty five is very tempting, especially with a global Avengers trade giving them all doom. Uh, you want to play him at seventy to get leadership top dial. Otherwise, he doesn't get that leadership power until his second and third clicks on his. Uh, half point line so on click four and five he has leadership and then on click one he has the leadership power he has the special defense power his first three clicks which will be on his second starting line and his first starting line his second starting line i do like more overall i'm okay with losing the leadership power so his first one is a eight speed charge 11 attack super strength 18 defense so that's special three damage with that special like we said his 35 point line is an 8 speed charge, 10 attack, super strength, 17 defense with the special, but a 3 damage with close combat expert. So he'll be doing more damage and he'll have the same attack on his second starting line, which is 35, which is half the cost of so 35 points less, which I really like. He's got zero range. And then he goes on to a flurry quake with combat reflexes down dial, which is solid, fine. His last click is kind of fun. He'll be a 12 for 3 because he's a flurry quake close combat expert it's just you know there's a lot going on here with john but compared to the u.s agent prime and then the john walker captain america we got he's not like a beast john walker he is more of a mini leadership role assistant like john walker yeah. he's not a main attacker by any means but he is still fun in his own right there's shenanigans that can be caused by giving avengers the doom team ability which is really fun I'm excited to play comic accurate Dark Avengers with him now that we have him, Sentry, we got Iron Patriot, you know, we have uh, Dakin. Basically, have a, one of the versions of Iron or the Dark Avengers. Pretty sure Dark Rain, Dark Avengers. I'm pretty sure we have now that we have the Lester Hawkeye. I don't think we have Ragnarok in modern. I would not have Ragnarok. Well, that's a bummer. But yeah, so he fills a good role on a team. Thunderbolts, solid. He's also him normal the, only the. Second U.S. agent to ever get the Avengers keyword. Ooh, which is the other one must have been from the first Avengers set, right? No, don't that think. one actually doesn't. He's got invaders. Oh, so it's Nick Fury. Yeah, it's the I one from it. Nick Fury. Really? Um, okay. I was gonna say he'd actually be a really fun. Uh, I don't think anyone in the Disney Plus set got Avengers, but uh, he'd be no, a really fun didn't. to combo with the Prime U.S. agent. Absolutely, that one. That one gains powers when somebody's KO'd, and then this one, like, basically auto succeeds on a leadership. So, yeah, um, yeah, you can have like double trouble kind of stuff going on with those two. But I no, he's it. real solid. I think he's, I don't know, he's interesting enough to work at both. But obviously, that thirty-five point line is really tempting just to have a full oh, team so of tempting. Avengers that can potentially Cheap. heal. Yeah, I like, it won't I like the thirty-five point swap though, like that. That is a 
it's not like a trait that uh, says at the beginning of the game or anything. It's just right. a constant check. So if he is KO'd uh, or if he's ongoing out, check, yeah, ooh, yeah, <laughs> so dumb. Yeah, and then him hitting the same at like being the same attack and actually a bigger damage at thirty five naturally, you lose that leadership. I just like that more. You know, he's a smaller investment at thirty five. The extra like to double his point cost, you only gain two more clips. You know what I mean? Versus yeah. if I played two of him, I would have eight clicks of life in total. I get that it's not necessarily the same. And not getting that leadership special. So good for it. A 12 it's, for four I think it's charge. really solid. Oh, it's only an 11 for four uh, charge. Oh, that's he only right. has a 10 attack. 11 for four. But still, an 11 for four charge super strength. No, that's solid. So an 11 for five. And one click of ESD Eddie's invincible. Two. Like, equipped the invincible with his own shield. Helpful. He's got ESD and combat reflexes. Yeah. It's sad. Oh, I like this year's agent. He's way different, <laughs> way different than the Disney Plus ones. He's flavorful in his own right for his own story, and I'm gonna have to pick up that Doom Avengers story that someone linked in our Discord where he's from. Let me actually Avengers Doctor Doom or six months. Oh, okay, I'll I'll figure out what comic series it's like called. Maybe it is just called Doctor Doom's Avengers. I think uh, maybe it's in the wake of World War Hate or Hate. Evil Avengers Unity um, Division. So yeah, I guess it's his uh, first issue, Avengers, Avengers World number fifteen. <laughs> Last issues. issue, Avengers World <laughs> number sixteen. A big uh, two issue. I do want to pick up line. issue one just to Doom uh, turned down know. Cannonball and Hawkeye or Bullseye. He turned yeah, down okay, like some yeah, actual I, Captain there's... Marvels on the list. Are you serious? Yeah, the click Doom's on team. click on volume one, uh, issue fifteen. Quote unquote like team doom's team Who is... will join doom's avengers the so worst... it's, he's got valkyrie yes 3d man or triathlon whichever version that is u.s agent elsa bloodstone and stingray like d-list of d-list avengers okay john i get he's your discount captain america valkyrie i get she's a powerhouse but like stingray and triathlon yeah. Elsa Bloodstone, like chick with gun, like what is Elsa that? What is this yeah, team? she's got a very specific purpose, and that's Air, yeah, hunting monsters. Yeah, like, outside of like monster related beat, stuff. You know, to steal what you said, Simi, like this team couldn't beat Doctor Doom. Yeah, why would this be <laughs> his team? I'm just like this is wild. Whatever Marvel writer was like, they were probably like, what characters are we allowed to use? Marvel's like here, the ones we don't care about, and they were like, ah, oh, this is what I get to work with, Stingray. Come on, man. Like, this is a rough... This is a rough... I mean, I'm going to play this team now. Last version of the Valkyrie in this look, still the coolest version of Valkyrie, which is the Fear Itself one, who I love. Iconic. I love her. Um, I'll have to play this team. But now it makes me wish we had this team in Modern, since we finally have this version of US Agent. But now we've got to go... we got to reach back to GSX for our Elsa Bloodstone. Then... Pulling the X Force for our Stingray. Yikes, man! Stingray is so bad. Uh yeah, he is not. Uh, he is not improved. With whoever him. made Stingray needs to rethink all of their life choices. But that's that's the LE <laughs> set zero uh, or just one hundred for Avengers Forever. U.S. Agent getting that mileage out of that Captain America sculpt though with Cap, U.S. Agent, and uh, Red Guardian. Or they were like, we got to do with the shields? No problem. We'll make as many dudes with shields as we want, ladies and gentlemen. I'm all for it. I love dudes with shields. That's that's like my favorite thing. All right. Let's get into a fun segment we haven't done in a while. Generic gallery. Why should you care? Keywords. 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 It's only game. Why do you have to be mad? Celebrity, police, past, and scientist, assassin, soldier, spy, tinker, tailor. No, they, they're not in there, but, you know, you get it. All right. The inner gallery for this month is the spy. Like always... Or mostly like always in generic galleries, Simi and I are also doing their own mini ones, which is the Silver Age or just the value corner and then Hidden Gem. Simeon has the value corner piece. He is building the 300 modern spy team. I'll be building, I think I went with 400 silver for a spy team. So Simeon, give us, give us your spy team and tell us about uh, the valuest of value members you have on there. Yeah, so uh, while... While this is 300 modern, this is by no means something that will win you 
uh, tournaments or anything. This is not a competitive build. It is a very fun build, in my opinion. I really like it. This is something that I'm actually looking forward to. Uh, and because the set is technically out, um, we're going to start off with the Avengers Forever stuff because there's a lot of spies in there. Uh, that's you know partially why we picked the keyword. But there's also just a lot of good stuff in there. So I've got three figures from Avengers Forever. Um, we'll start with the one that I... I started the whole team based around. So this is number 026, Nick Fury. He is 50 points, shield team ability, five range, two lightning bolts. The main reason we've got him on here is because he's got leadership. When he uses it and succeeds, you can generate an Avengers Forever 002 shield operative on click one. If a six was rolled, you may instead generate the Maria Hill 018 on click one. She on her own can also then generate, I believe, more... Uh, let me double check, but yeah, she can also generate Real? those yeah. uh, shield generics, the shield operatives. So, just a, a way to get a bunch of people out of there. There's that's a, a traded power. He goes on to stealth and regen super senses willpower, which is a decent combo. Uh, Maria Hill also has a team up, so you could play her starting with that team up and gives her and Nick Fury will or. Uh, gives them mastermind but only to target somebody with a shield keyword um, next up is the power broker so this is the prime the rare prime for this team Ooh, um, okay power broker the reason why she's on here will make a little bit more sense later but again uh, she can start the game with the super soldier serum equipped so she will um, then power give an adjacent friendly character an injection token when power broker uses willpower which because she has it as her uh, defense power and from the object she gets a plus one so it's a 50 50 for her but whenever she uses willpower and succeeds you can also remove an action token from each friendly character that has an injection token then she has mastermind willpower shape change and stealth top dial so the main reason that she is on the team is for this big heavy hitter uh good old green widow this is uh, uh yeah you're gonna put her on there she's so good uh, she, ah, she's okay. She's she's good. She's fun. she's so fun. Um, so this is the uh, Jennifer Romanov or whatever you want to call her. Uh, the Green Widow is She Hulk and Black Widow combined. Uh, Hundred points to the line that I'm starting her on. There is a lower point line that you could start her on, but I really need this big beefy person to hold the team together. I guess. Uh, so she's got Avengers, Martial Artist, Spy, and Warp World keywords um she's got the thing where she can pick either green and lime green or black and red um and then she gets to pick a what is it a standard power matching each color so you pick a set of colors and then one standard power you can pick any standard power that happens to be that color so you can get regen you can get flurry you can get super senses all kinds of stuff um but yeah she doesn't get willpower until her bottom dial and because you don't want her waiting till then to get willpower you want her to like be able to make an attack every turn she's going to be the object of the injection token from the power broker turn one i'm also starting her equipped or depending on if you're going with those rules already uh starting her equipped with u.s agent's shield which is five points and will give her uh combat reflexes yeah geez combat reflexes so again she has leap climb uh when she's given a move action after resolutions you generate a hindering marker in her square and if she moved five squares or less she may make an attack um one thing i don't think we touched on is you could pick black and red pick uh stealth and super senses and then move her full speed and just end up in stealth because you make a hindering terrain marker wherever she ends so she's kind of cool because that she also has the team player so she can copy shield or whatever else she might need to next up going along the theme with uh green widow we've got black widow from war of the realms number zero one one uh she gives everyone that has the avengers keyword or is adjacent to her stealth so pretty solid she also has a pretty important power that i need which is outwit uh she's got sidestep 10 attack she's a uh, 17 combat reflexes her own trait gives her stealth because she does have the Avengers keyword. She's friendly to herself. 
Um, not adjacent to herself, but friendly to herself and has the Avengers keyword. But yeah, that's the main reason she's on the team is she can give people like uh, Nick Fury stealth top dial. She gives uh, anyone that's adjacent stealth top dial. She doesn't give this next character stealth, though. Um, this is old Johan Schmidt. So because I'm making uh. generics, yeah, I had to pull out the... Uh, the guy that I didn't realize was really a spy. I don't think he's very spyish because his it does some espionage work in the shadow. Yeah, yeah. Right he does have ball. some shape changing abilities, at least in the movie. Uh, but yeah, this sure. red skull kind of easy to tell <laughs> if it's him or not because a uh, giant red skull for a face. But yeah. no, he's got uh, an important thing that is he makes Hydra agents on click one. Um, just like Nick Fury makes Hydra agents, he can also make a Hydra officer if he rolls a six, similar to uh, Nick Fury making Maria Hill. And then again, her Hydra officer can also go on to make Hydra agents. So you're just pumping out all these little dudes. Uh, he has combat reflexes, mastermind, toughness. Once per turn, when he uses mastermind and chooses a friendly character with the Hydra keyword, which will only be his own generics. Um, yeah, that character, if that character's KO'd from the attack, after resolutions, you can generate up to two of them on click three. And then it's even, even easier to feed your opponent points with that. But yeah, he's got that. He's got Outwit and Close Combat Expert with Poison. He will not get um, stealth from Avengers, obviously. But uh, if he's adjacent to Black Widow, he will. So, Or if he just gets knocked down to one of his last three clicks. Uh, next up. And I guess this is the, the last true piece on the team. Uh, yeah. This is just a piece that I think is super solid for the points. So this is from the Future Foundation. It's the 021 Human Torch, the Scroll Human Torch, which means Ooh. that, uh, let's see, it's the Green Widow can copy the Scroll team ability from this. She doesn't have shape change or access to it, but you can still give her super senses and then shape change on a six, which isn't bad. Um but yeah, this Human Torch is a running shot, 6 range, 10 for 3 with ranged combat expert, so he's an 11 for 4 top dial. And then he's got Barrier. Uh, he's just really solid for 30 points. He brings a lot to the table, and then with enough of the shield team that you're going to have, he's going to probably have like a 9 range, and you can probably just turn him into like a crazy sniper. And then uh, last but not really least, this is technically a sideline thing, it's good old, uh, let's see, what set is he originally from? Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., of course. Yeah, uh, this uh. is the Legacy Agent Coulson. Anytime a friendly character of 50 points or more with the S.H.I.E.L.D. keyword rolls a leadership and succeeds, and a 6 was rolled, they may instead generate Agent Coulson from the sideline on, on click 1. So Nick Fury happens to be 50 points, he happens to have leadership, and he happens to have the S.H.I.E.L.D. keyword. So... Uh, Nick Fury can generate one of the shield officers. He can generate Marie Hill, and then he can also pull in Agent Coulson from the sideline. Uh, Maria Hill is not enough points to pull in Agent Coulson on her own, but it's still pretty solid. Uh, Agent Coulson himself can then use leadership outwit, and when he uses leadership, he can also bring in shield operatives on click one when he succeeds. So, yeah, there's just a lot of pieces going on. It's a good thing we've got a lot of leadership because there's, let's see, there's six people and no one that can carry, no one that can taxi. Uh, there's no TKs. This is a very slow-moving team, but I think it's pretty solid. Between all the stealth, all of the um, leaderships, willpowers, uh, power broker, you can either like force your opponent to come to you. You can just have like power broker sit there and inoculize your whole team and try and generate as many bystanders as possible or not bystanders uh generics as possible or you can slowly move up into like hindering and stuff uh but yeah i think human torch being able to shoot almost halfway across the map with some shield stuff is pretty solid for 30 points yeah. i think it's just enough fun stuff and then yeah those hydra guys have pulse wave the um the shield generics they have shield team ability, of course, but then they also have stealth and close combat expert. So you could just send them out to tie people up depending on what you need. It's pretty, pretty fun. I can't wait to play it. Get like 30 shield operatives on the field. And then, uh, yeah, my 
Oh, yes. Well, I, the um, last figure I talked about, that is my value corner piece. So, uh, Human Torch from the Fantastic Four Future Foundation. So, you heard me describe him. What do you what do you think he's worth, Calder? He's got running shot, six range, scrolls team ability. He's a 10 for 3 with range combat expert and barrier. Now, granted, when the set came out, uh, he didn't have Indom, so he has right. gotten slightly better. Uh, but then also he is, and, uh, what, uh, a year old now? Yeah, he's a little girl, over a year old. I think he's got to be like almost two. under a dollar. Sure. Like he, around a dollar. He is he exactly a under a dollar. He is 99 cents. 99 cents? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, it says they have 12 plus, And like, this oh, is nice. a figure that I've thought about. Like you could almost play 10 of these guys in 300. And there just from like the sheer amount of like luck and numbers and barrier you probably do all right yeah. um but i mostly didn't put him on there in case anyone was building that team and wants like the maria hill team up or something like that there's no repeating oh, characters sure. on that team so you can use the team up cards with it um as far as tarot cards go if you were going to build around it uh, i would build with the the stealth one because that's obviously going to be one of the oh. biggest ones um and then from there, I would probably go with like the re rolls and yeah, like the two re roll ones to get your leaderships to pop off a few extra times. I think there's a pulse wave one, isn't there? There's a pulse wave. Uh, there's a pulse wave card. Yeah, there's yeah. one. Yeah, there is. All right. Uh, I like that a lot. I love that human torch. Uh, him and like that, the thing in that set that both have like running yeah. shot with RTE and charge with CCE. And, and like them all not having Indom at the time, and then like getting it once Wonder Woman, like those <laughs> like stand out got so much better. Yeah, like in a maybe power thirty creep. points now. Oh yeah, no kidding. Like Wonder Woman changes helped those guys out a ton. Like that's fun popper team is a bunch of those torches and things. Or like because they're all eleven for four with move and attack with their respective move and attack, and also just a cheap barrier too. You know, like that's nice. Right, I have four hundred point. Spy team. Ooh, ah, spy, spy, spies. I love Silver Age spies because they give you probably the coolest characters. So when I think I of spy was team... scrolling through all the stuff I couldn't use, just like, man. Oh, it hurts. Like, no. Yeah, Silver is pretty solid. I, I will say we are completely ignoring the best spies in Silver, which is the uh, Black Widow set. I hate Black Widow, or that Chase Black Widow. She scarred me for life so many tournaments 2020 so not on here sorry fellas light ladies and lasses but what we do have is ah, it's so fun so one of the team spies what are they good at creeping around being in the shadows stealth this is another good team with that stealth tarot card you get a lot of mileage out of it okay first off we'll do all our modern stuff and then we'll get into our silver stuff spoiler alert there's way more silver which i love the Marvel Studios Disney Plus 046 Winter Soldier. He is just a beast. 65 points. He's an 11 for 3 with Pen Blast and uh, Exploit Weakness. He's got Close Combat Expert traded, Super Senses traded, and Willpower traded. He is Running Shot and Stealth, and then Charge, but only if he occupies Hindering Terrain, which you're going to be if you have Stealth. And he has Team Player. That's very important for this team. All right, guys? We want a Team Player. So that's Winter Soldier. All right, he can be a 12 for 4 exploit, or he can just running shot for an 11 for 3 pen blast. He's always doing penetrating damage. I really love him. He's 7 clicks long for 65 points. There is enough points where you could get rid of the cheap filler I have at the end, where you could put on his White Wolf and give him the Super Soldier Serum, so he's a 50-50 willpower. But Winter Soldier's just a really good attacker, all right? Second modern Disney Plus guy, Baron Zemo. Honestly, with the amount of oh, yeah. other stuff in this team, you may not need Baron Zemo. He's got Passenger 2. My team climb sure golf. could use Baron Zemo. Yeah. So, so he's like really good carry. Passenger yeah. 2, Leap Climb Stealth. Solid. He also has leadership. He's also just an 11 for 3, 18 defense top yeah. dial. The for amount 30 of points is in a really nice. Or a sealed that 11 for 3 with 4 range actually ended up mattering. Like he actually took some shots and took out some people. Yeah. yeah, like, boom, that Baron Zemo, really, really solid. The modern stuff that is now coming from Avengers Forever, Red Widow. I really like Red Widow. She's really cool. We talked about her in our set review. She's a charge flurry stealth. It's her special speed power. She's a 12 for 3 exploit. 
is traded blades and then if she once per turn when she rolls a one or two on blades she may make a close attack for free which is really nice so you know one or two exploit damage is still pretty good but it's not as good as you wanted it to boom make another attack and she's 12 attack which is really nice uh she ignores characters got combat reflexes and stealth her whole dial never goes below an 11 attack with more 12s than 11s which is gnarly for 45 points we also have the Hydra Agent. He's just a, a running shot pulse wave. You know, six speed running shot, four range pulse wave. It's five range pulse wave overall. It's just fun. He gives me Hydra for whenever I want to make range attacks, which is cool. And the rest of this team is all Silver Age. So let's get into it. Biggest one I like here, Spy Master. He yeah. also has traded self, but if he's on a spy theme team, all right, your theme team probs go from three to six instead. And then he has a unique modifier where friendly characters with a spy keyword modify defense plus one if they occupy hindering terrain. Probably notice this. I've got a lot of stealth on this team. Majority of the time, they're going to be in stealth and they'll have a plus one defense, which I love. He's got a special thing where you can shoot back power later on. Not the biggest deal you want him for. But he's 65 points. He also has the underworld team ability, which means he can carry a uh, character's passenger two, but only if they're lower points, share a keyword. I have a lot of low point spies on this team. He is 65, which means he can carry uh, my Hydra agent. He can carry my Red Widow. He can carry a bunch of people on this team. I'm Now that I look at the amount of Underworld I have, if Winter Soldier copies it, plus another character, I probably don't need Baron Zemo, but we'll just keep going. Next character I like, who I consider my hidden gem, but I'll, I'll wait for them, actually. So we'll just go into the... We'll skip the hidden gem. We'll save it for last. The Scroll Warrior from the Captain Marvel movie set He's really interesting. He has an ability that I forgot about. So he has sidestep stealth. He's only 25 points. He has a scrolls team ability, which we can give to Winter Soldier. So now he has shape change on a six and super senses if we want him to after he's carried people up with Underworld. Uh, but Scroll Warrior also has a trait, which is if he occupies hindering terrain, which guess what? He's going to be. He The increased result of his shape change rolls by plus one. And then also adjacent opposing character this is a slash slash so it doesn't matter if he occupies hindering for this one but adjacent opposing characters can't use leadership or be carried which is another really good thing for 25 points to get rid of leadership when they're adjacent so i really like that next up we have the rose from earth x who i also oh, yeah. super enjoy he also 20s. just has, like straight up on dial prob which gives me a normal prob that i can use every turn which is nice without having to dip into my big six Theme probs. Leadership Mastermind. When he uses leadership and succeeds, instead of removing an action token, you may generate two hired flunky bystanders, which are always fun. And he has traded shape change. When he uses it and succeeds, give him a mystery token free. Remove a mystery token. This turn, friendly characters named Hired Flunky have free move. Hired Flunkies are a nine for one exploit with like stealth. And they also have the Underworld team ability, which is nice. So them getting a free move when he succeeds on Shape Change the next turn is really cool when he removes a Mystery token. So I like that a lot. And again, he's a Stealth Combat Reflexes who's going to modify his defense another plus one. So he'll be a 20 at close in Stealth, which I love. Don't they also get like the keywords of... Yeah, so they have Hydra, Magia, and Spy of so their... they'll uh, also get the them. plus one defense from Spy Master. Ooh, they, they will. You're right. Hindering terrain. Oh. That 16 is going to be a big 17. <laughs> I didn't realize it was only a 16. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not as crazy. Okay. But it's better. It is better. That's, that's all that matters. Oh, sorry. No, I lied. It's a. It's actually a 15, Simeon. My bad. So now they're a 16. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I gave him a little too much credit. My bad, Flunky. <laughs> uh, where is, what is next? Okay, Wasp. And you're like Calder. You got all the stealth, but all it takes is one dude who ignores it to shoot through your team. That is where uh, Wasp comes. He's a sidestep pen blast, super senses, two damage. She also has leadership, which is really nice. She's 40 points, which is a big investment for a re click long figure. But she also has stealth herself traded. She also ignores stealth for line of fire. And her other trait, which I love, is opposing characters within five squares can't use improved targeting abilities. So. If you're smart with Wasp, she has an 11 square reach if she moves with sidestep. She can get in close-ish to people, so that way they cannot shoot my stealth characters. She can help get rid of the uh, ignores hindering terrain for line of fire. It's not perfect, but it is good. It's situational. you got to do some good placement. But I really like this Wasp. She's I mean, two targets with two damage and pen blast. I really like. She's annoying, and that's what a Wasp should be. So I always like that Wasp. 
my last Silver Age figure to round out this team, who is going to be my my little uh, my hidden gem, because I think she got better with time, and I think she is a little bit of hidden gem, but it is Ink from the Batman the Animated oh, yeah. Series set. So Ink is really cool. When I looked at her dial, I was like, oh, wow, she's gotten way better, mostly because she's got close combat expert top dial with move and attack, which in makes you better. She has a trait, three, choose one, stealth, shape change, tiny symbol, or giant reach two. So you got to choose one of those, probably stealth, because we do love us some stealth. But also shape change is good because her special defense power is ESD and super senses. So she get two rollouts, which is really nice. Giant Reach is also good. Why is that? Because she has a special speed power, which gives her hypersonic speed and sidestep. If Ink occupies water terrain, though, she modifies her combat values minus one, and she can't use hypersonic speed or sidestep. So keep her in that hindering terrain. That's what we want. So yeah, and then she has Precision Strike with a 10 attack, and then 3 damage with Close Combat Expert. So she's an 11 for 4, punching you, hypersonic speed, 10 squares. She also has Side Stealth to help her get away. Maybe you fail your breakaway or something, or you don't want to make a breakaway, so then you choose Giant Reach 2 instead to even further her hypersonic speed range. She's also just straight up 6 clicks long, you know? Like, I really like Ink. I think she is definitely worth revisiting. She's a really cool sculpt got an axe hand and she's kind of got like club hand like coming out of her back but holding the club with her hand it's very interesting sculpt yeah i like it so she's cool so that is my spy team we got winter soldier that can copy underworld and carry two people we have spy master that can carry two people with underworld uh ink ironically will probably have to either be carried by baron zemo because she's our highest point person or carry the wasp who is tiny now that i the more i look at it i'm like you know we don't really need baron zemo on this team actually you find a different uh 30 points or 45 points if you want to get rid of baron zemo and the hydra agent maybe just put on 40 point red skull get rid of baron zemo get rid of the hydra agent and then add We'll do add the White Wolf trait for Winter Soldier. That way oh, yeah, yeah. we're not like wasting slots. There we go. Yeah. So we'll add the 40 point Red Skull, add the White Wolf trait. Red Skull can just make those Hydra agents. He'll also give us an outwit, which is nice. He does kind of ruin the thing. Red Skull doesn't have top dial stealth, which is a bit of a bummer. But everybody having stealth. We have great mobility. It is a bunch of cheap pieces. They all have, you know, decent dials. Six clicks, seven clicks long. A lot of rollouts, getting rid of leadership. This is a very subterfuge. IT on you have a lot of prob we have one on dial prob and there's more spy prob that you could add to it but then the six probs is so fun so I, I think this is just a really fun spy team I want to give it a try personally I think it's really cool so yeah that is that is my spy team and that is my hidden gem I think ink or the scroll warrior could be a hidden gem I do like that scroll warrior a lot actually yeah. for 25 points getting rid of leadership and being carried is really cool that, yeah, that works out more often than you would think. Uh, just yeah. throwing Let's, him out uh, there to like be a hindrance. Let Simeon and I know if you play either of our teams or if you make your own spy team this week with either all the cool stuff we got in Avengers Forever, which is a ton of spies, or uh, you know just whatever spy team you might play. Let us know, guys. All right, let's go ahead and jump into some listener question. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Simeon... Hero Clix sets are pretty fun. Hero Clix comes out in sets. Let's talk about Hero Clix sets about all of time, shall we? Sounds fun to me. Yeah, let's do it. So uh, Malcolm asks, what are your top three sets of all time? Yeah. Years of Hero Clix. <laughs> Just as a disclaimer, if you ask me, like, the next series of questions, if you asked me these like five different times over the course of a couple different days, I would give you, I would never give you the exact same answers, but uh, yeah, top three sets of time. Uh, my number one is probably always going to be Wolverine and the X-Men. Um, okay. It was like the first set that I fully completely got. I feel like it was one of those sets where there was very little fat to be cut. It was, it had like a ton of characters that were new or prominent or whatever. Um, very little characters where I was just like, oh, like, who's that? Like, some people don't know who Quentin Quire is, but he was pretty big at the comics that I was reading at the time, so it was cool I, to see I him. I don't know who Quentin Quire is. He's the pink-haired Phoenix Force kid that... Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And, like, he's uh, wearing shorts, right? Yeah, he always, like, makes... He's, like, almost like a Green Lantern. He always makes, like, weird, like, psionic 
Like he's kind of does like the Psylocke oh. thing where he makes like these okay. like pink ish like constructs out of mind blade energy stuff. Uh, he's the one that has the shirt that says like Magneto is right. That kind of oh, he's edgy, gotcha. edgy man. Yeah. But like, no, he was in sure. there. Uh, Corvus was in there. Uh, X Man. The only time he was ever made was in there. And so, yeah, there's like a lot of stuff. Mojo. Like, I just really love that set. Um, second set in no particular order. Uh, I'll say the one that I put down first and then I retroactively was like, oh, wait, that other one's like a much better set. So I put down Trinity War first because Trinity War Ooh, was just okay. an awesome set. I really love the uh, Justice League Dark stuff that we got. We got a cool Frankenstein. We got Dead Man. We got uh, Constantine, Mazaz. Uh, you know, there's Black Adam. There's like all kinds of really cool stuff in that set. And it all felt really updated. The sculpts felt a lot cooler looking than previous DC sets at least to me i mean there's yeah. also like previous set, i mean like you know like five years prior not like you know flash is also an awesome set um and then the last one that i said of all time is war of light i feel like war of light is just okay. one of those sets that even though i i've completed the chase set i don't think i'll ever have a complete set of war of light because um I think a complete set of Warlight is the friends that you made along the way and not the figures <laughs> from the set. No. Uh, no, I just... I feel like that's one set where, like, there's so many generics and, like, so many cool things to, like, collect and um, build with and stuff. Just out of that, like, you could probably... If you had a full set of Warlight and, like, a few duplicates here and there, you and, like, a friend could probably play different games of War of Light-related stuff for years and never get oh, tired yeah. of it like it's Absolutely. such a good set and like you know it, like there's it's its own like little meta in there but you know if you're like oh weapon over weapon of quartz really good so like we're gonna you know have all these lantern recruits fight him like as like some sort of weird battle or something hey everyone right just issuing a quick spoiler night. warning no for about the next escape three sight. to five minutes, we're going to be talking about the animated series, the animated Green movie, Lantern's Green the Lantern, Beware My Power, uh, that released in 2022. I realize most people haven't probably watched this yet, so if you don't want massive spoilers um, and hot takes about the film, then don't listen to the next five minutes of us discussing it. Um, let's go? Or if you're like a terrible DC animated movie, you could have John Stewart, brand new Green Lantern, take oh, down gee. Parallax Hal Jordan. Because, yikes, what a terrible animated movie. Who wrote that? That is insane. I hate that movie. Kills Parallax Hal Jordan specifically? Hal Jordan is Parallax? Yeah, it's like six ring, you know, like crazed Hal like cover where he's got like this, like Dang. multiple rings on each finger. Yeah. And he's, and he's possessed by Parallax. And, and just brand new John Stewart. And yeah, this is like how Jordan were like earlier in the movie, they go to Oa and there's literally a statue that's like 30 foot tall of Hal Jordan. And like the little info thing is like, he's greatly considered to be the great greatest Green Lantern of all time, blah, blah, blah. And John Stewart literally just got a ring like that Wild. weekend. Like it might have only right. been a day. And he's like playing video uh. games on the ring to like learn how to use it and beats parallax hal jordan with it it's dumb. spoiler alert for right. a terrible movie that you shouldn't bother your time with also like that's not even i, I don't want to get too off of track but um do you know who destro is pink dude with uh yeah like the fin? Like fishtail mohawk guy yeah. one big they eye also yeah. just like completely like he like mind controls John and then he just like snaps out of it. He just like wills himself hmm. out of the mind control. Like okay. it was nothing. This is a guy that, like, takes... that like mind controlled the entire justice league. Yes. And like Superman. That one, that, oh. like the whole justice league had to fight. And he's like yellow lantern empowered and he just becomes a lackey. And I just like, ugh. Ow. who wow. wrote this? Is it you Stanley from the grave? Did you, was this your last stab at like dc, at DC just like, trying to ah, take this i don't understand worst. your comics like i it feels like somebody just had no clue and was like ah like give me three villains 
Uh, that one, that one, that one. They seem important. Uh, and one hero, that one. Yeah, he's new to the game. Okay. And that's it. It's a terrible right. movie. We're doing a mini rant on Green Lanterns. So I was really excited. HBO for a long time was in the works for a Green Lantern TV show. And the idea was it was going to focus on Guy Gardner and Alan Scott. Two like Green Lanterns that get like zero screen time, like 90% of the time, you know, but are both super interesting in their own ways. I being just super unique. And then Alan Scott being like a totally different version of the Green Lantern core idea. Because he's not like Green Lantern core. He's magical and all this stuff, right? That was the TV show, like, in its essence. And it was going to flip between Alan Scott in, like, the 40s and 50s and Guy Gardner in the 80s and 90s. It was going to be really, like, I was like, wow, that's such a cool, unique idea. I love that. It's giving screen time to, like, usually it's either John or Hal, period. Like, those are the biggest Green Lanterns, typically. So I was so pumped. This week, I don't know if it's because, you know, James Gunn took over DC or not, but this last week they said, we're going to rework the Green Lantern TV show to a John Stewart focus show. And I'm like, why? He gets all of Justice League Unlimited and like all these animated shows, and he just got a movie. Like, clearly they're pushing John. Good for him, I guess. To me, he's like, all the John fans are going to be mad at us. The most boring Green Lantern. He makes the lamest constructs. Like, he's not super interesting to me because I'm, you know, I'm biased. I like Guy Gardner. I like the hot headed Green Lantern who wants to do it his way. You know, the one who has more will than Hal Jordan. And that's a fact. Read a comic. That's true. You know, <laughs> like, it's like, that's so cool. And I was like, man, Guy Gardner's going to get a live action debut. That's so great. I you know, he say... looks visually different than Hal. I think if they would have done Kyle, people would have been like, Ugh, wasn't there yeah. another white dude in a Green Lantern thing that we just hated? You know, so like he's visually different than Hal, though, with his haircut. He also has the best Green Lantern costume, which you can also not argue that because the Green Lantern costume sucks. Black and green, that's just bad. At least Guy has, like, a belt and a jacket and, like, style. Not, like, a painful 90s mask that Kyle has. Sorry, DC fans. Sorry, John Stewart fans. <laughs> this movie, the like, the John Stewart, uh, I don't even want to say the name of it. I can't remember it. Uh, it wouldn't have been so bad had the stakes not just been ludicrously high. So high. Because, yeah. like, the, it started off so good. Like, it... Uh, they start like with like John's like kind of like backstory and like he's having like some PTSD moments and stuff like that, and it's like actually like really well written for the first portion, and then you see them just like body des. I think I called him Destro, Despero, Despero. Uh, yeah, yeah, they just they just like body Despero. Like he's like a Yellow Lantern like lackey, and like there's like a few other Yellow Lanterns that like also just get like kind of like bodied by these dudes. But then, like, the, literally, like, the only problem I have with it, because I could have I could have finished the movie had it just been them going after Sinestro. But it was the fact that it was actually, like, Parallax Hal in yeah. full power that I was hey, just stronger. like, this, like, Despero's one thing. Like, you can just pretend like he was underpowered on, like, I don't know, mind-controlled, I guess, somehow, whatever, depowered. Uh, but... Yeah, the rest of it was just unforgivable. It was so, so out of characteristic to, like, just... That would have been, like, had... um, It's, like, Batman Year Zero, and he has to go up against Superman, and he just, like, instantly, like, finds, like, a kryptonite ring and, like, beats him into submission. Like, that would have been the same... The same kind of, like, stakes, where it's, like, Batman's, like, I'm gonna put on this suit. Oh, no. There's a guy flying around that I want to beat up. Good thing I found this rock randomly. I'm going to smack him with it. Oh, it Could you imagine like, a movie where a Batman we've never seen before beats up Superman off yeah. the bat? That'd be such a terrible like movie. A Robin, Who would ever make like, that movie? It'd be like the equivalent of Damian Wayne coming to like, I don't know, Damian's a bad example. He was trained. From... It's just the worst. I hate Damian. I think most people do. Yeah. It's an awful character. Like, <laughs> like I get like, it. You're you know, like Tim, kid. like, or, uh, or, uh, you know, uh, Dick, he like, gets out of the circus and gets trained as Robin for like a couple weeks. And then Batman's like, Oh, got to bounce by the way, Superman's coming to fight me. So if you could just take care of that and he's like, Oh, no problem. I've been doing this whole superhero thing for a total of two days now. So I can totally do that. Uh, all right, let's, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be at our rant limit just yet. We've, between this and Marvel Snap, we might have talked more non-hero clicks than hero clicks. <laughs> no, wait. I still have to give my favorite sense. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, uh, my favorite too. sets of all time are WWE. I constantly go back to WWE. I include Ultimate Warrior and uh, Invisible John Stewart in this, or John Stewart. Gosh, ooh, John Cena. Whoa, whoa, whoa. John Stewart's on the brain. Uh, I love WWE. Deadpool set, the first Deadpool set was just a really special set for me. That was the first time I ever bought a brick. First, like, so cool. I love the zombie chases in the Deadpool set. Got me in all these weird random versions of characters. It's our newest version of Arnim Zola. We still don't have a newer version of Arnim Zola. That one's still and I, cool. I like it. Huh? Uh, that one's still cool, that Arnim Zola. Oh, he's really cool. Yeah, with all the Gwen Stacy bystander the, clones. Yeah, They're the hilarious. Gwen clones and then the... Yeah perplex power but only if they share names or something yep like i so i really like that there's a ton of characters in deadpool set that i like and then the disney plus set that was just an instant favorite set of all time loved it loved 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 it so cool all the sculpts were so fun i loved all the characters that made in it i was a big fan of all these disney plus shows for loki um and i really super enjoyed it they gave us some great stuff ironically all three of these sets there's not a single steve rogers captain america in them but these are still my favorite sets of all yeah, Trinity War could have been swapped out with WWE or Disney Plus. I actually had Disney Plus written down before War of Light, and I was See? like, "Oh, War of Light actually like takes it for me over Disney Plus." But then for some reason, Trinity War still snuck in. Trinity War still has it's some a really cool that set. I just really love, and it's got like yeah, it's got enough figures and characters that we don't get enough of that I really like it. To me, in your worst three sets of all time, yeah, this one's a little bit easier. Uh, cause I don't have to go into like explanation. Um, so I'm just assuming anything that was made is considered a set. So number one is Lone Ranger. Like, okay. Yeah. The fact that like, yeah, there's, there's probably like other sets that were full sets that you could be like, Oh, that's not really a full set. It's like a gravity feed and it's only four figures and two bystanders. Um, but man, is it bad? The, the rollout <laughs> was bad. The, the fact that I paid $5 for a full gravity feed's bad. The fact that I have half of a gravity feed unboxed. I don't know why I kept unboxing them. But, oh, jeez. Um, the only fun thing I can say about Lone Ranger is if you buy a gravity feed for cheap enough and you do a BR, it's pretty funny to watch like how that plays out. Uh, so, yeah, that's my number one. Uh, Teen Titans. That was a set that I, outside I of it. like maybe two figures, I've never bought less of a set or just thought like more of like a set was like worthless like m the majority of that set i just hate or i just don't think is like worth playing um luckily like rebirth gave me most of the titans that i actually care about or would want to play and much better versions um but yeah and then, uh last this one's i could probably think of a better one but elseworlds was the one that i had to go with because elseworlds was just uh for me, it was like a complete skip outside of generics and yeah. super rares. And like the chases, I, I never ended up getting the chases, even though one of them was like pretty prominent and uh, competitive for quite a while. And the Superman's like a really cool sculpt as far as Superman goes. The Batman's one of like my favorite versions of Batman. I just never collected any of those chases. They weren't something that I desired that much. Uh, I did play against a few of them every so often but yeah the the super rares were the only thing that i really liked king aquaman elijah snow um leather wing the al jordan the like what do they yeah. call it 50 or a hundred thousand and one nights um jordan uh he's got a cool like unique power but even then like by today's standards he's kind of like expensive but yeah uh i never Never got tired of pulling Dale Suderman out of boosters. That's Ma, for sure. Basketball, dude. You need at least five of them for like a team, and you can yeah. paint them. It'd be hilarious. Ugh. It just when that was the rare in my booster, damage. and I was like, man, please, please hit me to click four, please, please, yeah. just hit me to click four. Um, yeah, what a terrible, terrible figure outside of outside of that one cool click that he has. Um, but yeah, that's that's just a set that I, I there's like very few redeeming pieces in it for me. Yeah. yeah. My worst sets, I tried to think of sets. Like there were some I had Teen Titans written down, but I'm like, you know, I never really played any Teen Titans. Teen Titans didn't do anything wrong to me, you know, not personally. So I'm gonna kind of change it. So I, I would say House of X is up there. Ooh. Not because of, like, figure design, but more so because of the distribution and everything being messed up with House of X. 
it's a set where it's like i don't know if i buy a booster of this if it's on you know my comic stores you know, rack my shelf it's just like ugh such a it's such a risk to just get nothing so like the distribution with house of x is just so bad i would say that's probably in like worst sets of all time i didn't buy any of it still on a more personal note dota dead okay. or portal or any valve ip i care about more than dota just hurts even if it was going to be like as bad as they were and not like really good at all I still would have preferred getting six Team Fortress 2 sculpts as opposed to the six random Dota folk <laughs> okay. that we got instead, you know? But that's purely a bias. These kids, I still love the chess set you made for TF2, so maybe I would prefer that over... No, nah, I would still prefer, like, bad random TF2 characters than a chess set. But the chess set is still super cool, and I am still grateful for that. But yeah, so Dota's up there. I'm like, meh, you know, not a Dota fan. Yeah. I'm just sort of like, man, this could have been any other Valve property I care about, you know, like in that sense. Even so, just yeah. like for five figures, if they were going to release a five figure set, they could have done Portal, like, or Portal yeah. 2, whatever. But yeah, you could easily whatever. do like uh, a Peabody, and... a round one, Glados, Shell, and then that, man, <laughs> there's not, there's very few characters in Portal. Yeah, there's not a lot. Uh, yeah, the cube, not object, yeah, I the, guess. The companion cube. kind of cool. Just have a companion cube, heavy object. that maybe had special rules. That'd be kind of fun. No, but I Left for Dead. Like, that would have been such a cool starter set. You oh, know, absolutely. either, like, the one or two. Left for Dead 1 or 2, either that'd one. A, and have it be the zombie, the special zombies. Oh, yeah. Where, like, be you, great. Yeah, you've got four survivors, and then one person's controlling the zombies every other turn. For fun. Yeah, so... It's, it's not even like that it's care, bad. It's just more like, uh, I wish it wasn't Dota. You know, I wish it was any other property. Uh, and then I have, uh, between two, I'll, I'll go to Joker's Wild. Joker's Wild's like, man, is really badly point-costed more than anything. Joker's Wild just felt very bloated in point-cost. But you yeah. were actually getting a lot of figures felt over-costed. None of them ever felt like a steal. You know, obviously there's uh, Shaquem Thunder in there, but besides like him and Bizarro, Bizarro, Bizarro Granero, it was like this set is like the chase team was, could have been really cool, but instead they were all just kind of meh besides Bizarro Granero. Then the rest of it was just like not, not big on it. You know, you didn't sell me on this DC set, Joker's Wild. So I think that one's a pretty bad one. In I don't fully disagree with you. But I do okay. slightly disagree with you on that one. Sure. There's probably, there's definitely worse, but I, I know that was a set where I was like, luckily, eh. yeah, luckily I can go further into that on one of the following questions. <laughs> cool. A most underrated set of all time. Is and here Joker's it is. Wild. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I, I might be underestimating how underestimated the set is. It might not be underestimated at all, but I feel like the Flash set is underestimated. I feel like uh, people, like don't look back at it as fondly as like some other sets because uh when it came out like sure it was like the new hotness and i remember like the speed tokens and stuff being cool and people enjoying that but um in like the the now times where everyone's got indom uh there's yeah. a lot of stuff in that set that's actually like solid there's i mean there's a lot of stuff that's still heavily bloated like point cost like zoom and um like the flash and like you know captain thunder there's like just like some really really expensive pieces still but uh like the authority is like a really fun fairly cheap team that you can play and it's actually still like pretty decent in my opinion uh one that did not age well and probably will never age well is mirror master who just straight up should have been able to do like the stuff that characters can do nowadays like cable and stuff where they can just make. So it was uh, the first copy of Mirror Master on your force cost 80 points and begins the game on click one. And then additional copies of this character on your force cost 30 points each. And they have only two clicks. So you're paying 30 points for two clicks of Mirror Master uh, duders instead of any other figure nowadays. That would have just been like you include two for free or you pay like X amount for, you know, each one. But man, he was a bloated cost then and he really needs to yeah i don't know legacy card that guy but yeah i feel like it's an underestimated set um the only thing that i think makes sense as to why is because the chase set of it or the chase theme was just the trinity of sin 
Uh, it was the question Phantom St- Stranger and Pandora, which is a weak chase theme for the Flash set. But as far as like DC goes, there's so many cool villains. And uh, yeah, I think like internally the set itself plays really fine with itself. But then even outside of that, you can use those speed token dudes to do some cool stuff still. So my underrated set, it may be a bit of a controversial one, but I bought a lot of these because they were super cheap and on sale one time. But it's going to be the tab app stuff. Yes, oh. I know. I do think it's underrated in the way there's a lot of really interesting and cool abilities throughout like all the tab app stuff. So we're going to take this Wolverine, for example, who I really like. 100 points. And with the change, he's charge, willpower, exploit top dial, 11 for 3. On every click that he doesn't have a stop click, he has willpower, which is really cool. He also just has traded toughness straight up. Uh, his stop click is stop regen in you know, a more convoluted way for back then, but he's got two of those throughout his 100.7 click long dial, which is really fun. The Captain America had improved movement at the time, hindering and characters, which is really cool. And then he could give an adjacent character ESD to use until your next turn. So even if they weren't adjacent, it's like that was really neat. The like even the Superman, when he had super strength, you if you hit someone with an object, you would instead reduce it by one and then deal them an unavoidable after the fact, which is a really cool ability. You know, the Batman is still solid when he was adjacent to a wall blocking or higher elevation he was as if he considered hindering terrain in that square which is really unique and cool so there's a lot of cool ones thor had like weird running shot hypersonic power and all this other stuff the spider-man ones are the only andrew garfield spider-mans we're ever gonna have probably i don't know but he has all this cool flavor text. He has the, you found my weakness, small knives reference. Like in the first movie, his trait is, oh, I'm sorry, dude, I'm so sorry. So there's a lot of cool flavor text in these. So yeah, I think no one ever like looks at Tab App at all. Lizard is kind of weirdly good for 119 points. Now that the dolphin symbol got buffed, he's eight clicks long. He's got some really cool charge. You give him a power action, you place him or an adjacent or in or adjacent to any square of water terrain within eight squares, and then he makes a close attack as a free action. So if he's jumping from water, he has an eight square like reach, which is really cool, right? Uh, and then he also has like some smoke cloud mind control stuff with his like you know gas that he has down dial, which is really cool. He's eleven for four at one point with that like eight square like special move. So it's just really neat, you know. Traded blades like. All these tab app characters are actually really unique and have some really cool yeah. abilities. That's and no boss, one no one ever looks at them. Eight or range, damage. Ten for four. Or damage top tile. <laughs> ten for four, sure. And then he's got force blast is free. And then uh yeah, all his attacks co- or range attacks cause knockback, which is really cool. Like get it, their sculpts are big and doofy or whatever, and they kinda got that weird thing on their base, which is actually kinda easy to pop off. Uh you can break it with your hands. Yeah. It's kinda I removed it's all of them easy, from mine. Actually. Yeah, like it does. It's not too hard at all. And you can sculpt swap them if you want to, but it's also like it's cool. Like the the tab app, and actually that Christian Bale Batman isn't even bad for sixty one points and eleven attack, charge, exploit, three damage with like toughness and Batman TA, which is just fine. You know, so yeah, I think it's I think the tab app stuff is worth looking at, and some of it may even be worth building around. But it's like. Really unique abilities, definitely bloated point costs by today's standards for sure. But some of them have gotten better with the rules changes, and they just are kind of fun. Yeah, uh, I actually, yeah, right. it's like a set that I I still own most of like the tab app stuff because and it's easy. Like you can probably actually the time were like They're fifteen bucks, but now you can probably get them for like five bucks for a pack of three, whatever. Uh, all right, next is most overrated set of all time most overrated set of all time uh i didn't really know what to like go with here um i i want to say like something like abpi i feel like is like probably the most overrated but it's actually like i think people just like rated it correctly so i'm gonna go with something that's that i think is like a lot of people look back fondly at that i don't care for as much wouldn't that be world's finest um okay it's like another one of those sets where it just didn't hit a lot of marks for me. Uh, there's some cool, like, I don't know. There's cool, uh, what do we call it? 
um like keyword stuff in there but uh right. i feel like the chases were like the main cell the the kc chase line was like the main cell for it and the kc chases were awesome they were all like really cool in their own way like all of them were worth collecting but like the rest of the set to me was just like a big like pass like i didn't like any of the super rares really um uh, the only one i collected was monster mala and the brain because I like little bystanders yeah. that pop off. But, um, yeah, there's – I guess I, I also have the Trinity from that set because they were cool. Um, and they all had traits that worked with each other. But, no, I didn't pick up any of the, uh, like, the Metal Men or any of the, like, random, like, wizard, demon, black cat. I didn't pick up any of that oh, stuff. Oh, right, the generics. Those were cool, though. They also, were something that pushed this set probably – uh, further was uh, this was the first set that ID cards came in, which might not have been as big as the previous set, which was Superman Wonder Woman bringing in the uh, the Retaliators and like the Possessor stuff came back with uh, Brainiac and Eclipso, I think. Yeah, yeah, Eclipso and Brainiac came back, and then they had all these Possessors all of a sudden. But yeah, World's Finest was the I think the first set that had ID cards, right? No, the first was Avengers Assemble. Oh, was it? Or, I think oh. it's called Avengers. Oh, this was the last one. The last one until... Yeah, that, this is the last okay. one until there was like LEs and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah, this was even after Nick Fury. Okay. But yeah, I guess DC just getting finally getting their... That's the first ID one cards. for DC. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the reason. I guess I think it's a little overrated. Uh, those ID cards are still usable in silver. They're actually like way better than they probably ever were in modern back then. But... I honestly didn't use any DC ones outside of I think the only DC one I ever put on an actual team for an actual purpose was uh two face. And that was a convention exclusive one. Really? Even like Harley Quinn ever. Harley Quinn was like the biggest DC. Uh, no, I might've put you. I probably did have Harley. Yeah. That call in energy explosion yeah. one, the title character. Yeah. I most overrated. And people might get mad. I think it's Web of Spider-Man, honestly. The like set does absolutely it has some bangers and some amazing figures like that Deadpool, Nightcrawler, of course, uh Cosmic Spider-Man, Bombastic Bagman. I'm not saying it's not without it's like really, really, really cool ones. But overall to me, there are some of the like worst sculpts ever in this set. What X-ray Jackal? They're so bad. Look at Sandman's no. eyes and tell him that. Okay, Sandman's cool. I'm not saying they're all <laughs> bad, but like, you know, like Moreland's garbage. Yeah, you know, some of these are so 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 terrible. Like, That's true. There, there are just an omega amount of like bad sculpts, mostly in the common uncommon section. Once you get into the rares and That's, super rares, yeah. even like. Vapor is really bad. Doppelganger is just Moreland Doppelganger. Uh, you no, know, Groot. Those are all like pretty rough for super rare sculpts. Just the the entire common uncommon section. A lot of just you know people hate it. People like to hate on Incredible Hulk for this, but let's not forget Web of Spider Man was like a ton of alter ego stuff where it's just like okay Norman Osborn. No, all right, need Eddie Brock, Peter Parker, bunch of like just normal dudes. You know, there's just I don't know. To me, there's there's a lot of bad sculpts. There's a lot of stuff that's not playable at all. Besides, like a handful of supers, there are. Is there just no chases in this set either? Looking at it, like there's a bunch of LEs and super rares, yeah, but I don't think there's any like chases at all in this set. Like that's pretty tough. Or I think maybe the chases are Spider Hulk, Doppelganger, Bombastic Bagman, Cosmic Spider Man as like the oh. rarest Spider people. Yeah, I guess the, I don't the know. Unique. The unique esque well, like chase type deal Iron maybe. Man War Machine's a unique super. I, yeah, I yeah, don't it's know. true. That is no, interesting. And... I don't remember. Like I obviously didn't pull any of the set when it was like released. I wasn't playing, but um, yeah, I own a lot of those bombastic bagmans. I own, I think, two cosmic Spider Mans. Uh, I have that Morlin, even though yeah, these yeah. dials trash. Sculpts okay. Actually, that, that Sandman is actually terrible and terrifying. Yeah. No, I was joking when I said look at okay. Sandman. You said that. I was thinking yeah. of the, um, I think the clobbering, yeah, I was thinking of the clobbering time Sandman. I'm like, nah, he's kind of cool. But no, I have a Spider-Man Sandman. Ooh. It's oof. The one and Ugh. only time we probably will ever get Cardiac, the guy with a bow staff that can give you a heart attack. Nice. Uh, good wow. web of Spider-Man pick. Uh, no. Yeah, there is, there is like like any set, you like hear the set and you think like, 
oh, Bullseye, Nightcrawler. Sure, um, I actually cool. played that Groot. The Groot's right, dial is okay. Stuff. His sculpt's just eh. Yeah, um, yeah it's, again, eh. Yeah, so why is there just Bagman, Cosmic Spider-Man. Guardian of the Galaxy? And why is, like, Groot? Just he him. He seems so out of place. Yeah, it's like, why is Groot here? I miss something? Well, what's up with that? It is wild, because we place. also then have, like, randomly X-23 and Warpath, like, X-Force versions. Yeah, I don't get, like, the X-Force mini, like, Dakins in this set. Yeah. Like, why? why? Those For two, and then Dakin, and then I think that's... Uh, no, there is an X Force Wolverine, but then like Nightcrawler is an X Force. Uh, I don't think there's any other X Force. So yeah, it's just those three. I don't know. I don't really we'll know say it's got going Prowler, on. and Prowler is goaded with the sauce. I love Prowler. Prowler's awesome, but you know, besides like meh, meh, meh. Best version of Prowler, by the way. Hobby Brown is the best Prowler. I'll not be arguing that. But anyways. It's my most overrated set. I do think it is very overrated. I do Number really love that, that anti-venom, though. Uh, given sure. the close combat action, if the target takes damage from this close combat attack, all of its powers are countered until the end of the turn. Just the, Every anti-venom they've made has been like funny in like some sort of like ridiculous way. All right. right, number five is which set aged badly? Please. Probably a lot of sets. Just more yeah. creep, but yeah. Uh, I just went with the Incredible Hulk. Um, I personally like the Incredible Hulk set. I like the chases. Uh, are any of them something that you could play today? Probably not. Like, realistically, like Ice Hulk is a 12 for 4 for 130 points and 6 range. Mighty Thor with 2 R's uh, has running shot super strength, 11 for 4, 6 range for 135 points. Wolverage is probably like the one that I like the most but they don't have, like, the... They didn't do, like, stop clicks back then, really, like, very often. So he's got the revert clicks where you could switch him into Chaos War Wolverine, Fantastic... Uh, or Fast Forces GSX cool. Wolverine, or GSX 009 Wolverine um, on current click number or click number minus one, minus two, uh, depending on which one you switched him into. It was eh. It was eh. Um... Even like the cooler figures from the set that weren't chases, like the Cosmic Hulk, you thought you would think Red King would have been like cool. That was like a cool yeah. storyline, right? Sakar, like the the whole him control disking people. Nothing on his dial to like really represent that. Really, uh, he had stuff that do- did like knockback, but it was just like him in the power armor. Um, Kazar has literally no special stuff, and he's a cha- or he's a super rare. So he's like stealth Wild. blades, combat reflexes. He had duo attack, I guess. I shouldn't say he had nothing special. But yeah, like some of the coolest figures from there were Rick Jones and Amadeus Cho. And you know a Hulk set is like kind of rough if the cooler characters are the support pieces and not the big attack people. Yeah. Like even uh, Joe Fixit with like his, he was like probably one of the only ones that wasn't awful and he's the one that got like the legacy card, so now he's like even better. Uh, they dropped what uh, forty points off of his cost, but yeah, they had like so many options with like things they could do, and they had like cool generics. They just overcosted some of the generics. The aim yeah. agents were thirty eight points for a a nine attack, one damage. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, Rough. Hulkbuster soldiers were forty one points. Yeah. Yeah, Incredible Hulk is a ugh, it's it's a set. it's a set where I like the sculpts, but like man, I just outside of like a very few figures, I can't really justify playing the dials anymore. I think aged really bad, and people, I promise, I'm not just being a Spider Man hater this week, but it is Amazing Spider Man because it was a really really awesome set when it came out at the time. The Dracula, the Eric vampires, Zubembi, all this stuff. Really, really cool. Living Mummy was really, really cool. Like, if you look at like the most meta-defining stuff at the time, like Brother Voodoo, you know, like, whoa, he was so crazy. I hated playing against him. But now you look back and it's like, oh, he could just mind control for free if he had a token. Which, compared to some other mind control shenanigans we've seen, is not worth, you know, 79 points. Or like uh, that Ghost Rider who ran the meta that, you know, that year he came out. is just like, okay, 
he deals a penetrating damage when he's got an action token, you know, to someone within three squares and line of fire, like a single person. That's not even as good as Shredder's. You know, it's like everything is just, I feel like it's aged pretty bad. The Nightmare in there, we've got a way better Nightmare slash, oh, we have a way better Blackheart, you know, now. Just think, though, you can play Rock. Alyosha Craven and Kazar <laughs> from the new set. No, I actually was seeing it. Alyosha Craven might be the one that's aged best just because that ability is still solid. Yeah. But even then, Kazar does the same ish thing. He points now. Yeah. 20 points less. Yeah. And not being a prime is another big, big deal not beat a prime also yeah like looking back at like older sets a lot of times the only like quote-unquote playable figure they either one have like a trait that's just kind of crazy or two they weren't in dom at the time and so that's the only thing that saved them from being like 130 points for no reason oh yeah because like the the 200 point man thing from amazing spider-man not in dom for 200 points he, yeah, I love, and I love that man thing. I love man thing Howard the Duck too, but it's like, man, they are not able <laughs> for how much they cost. Like man yeah. thing Howard the Duck has more nines on their dial than tens at 152 points. You oof. We did get the first uh, WWE character in that Amazing Spider-Man set though. Oh, who? What? Kane. <laughs> Kane, oh gosh. One of like okay. the failed spider clones Kane. or whatever. Yeah. You know, like, eventually like Bro, turned to like Kane. goo. He looks. Gosh, yeah. I mean, if he showed up in the WWE, I would not look twice. If he was like, "Oh yeah, I'm a clone from the original Kane," I'd be like, "Sure, okay." Can't yeah, wait until you turn into goo. You got the you got the red the red cape. Yeah, you're Kane, dude. Totally. Like Same partner. intro music okay. has to be a clone. Uh, obviously, I mean, clone. People thought that Kane and uh, the Undertaker were actual brothers in real life. Actual brothers. Yeah, long. that was funny. All right, number six. Most surprising set? Set, oh, no, 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 yeah, number six. Set aged well or got better over time. Aged well or got better. Uh, so this one is kind of a cop-out answer for me, but I said ABPI. I think there's very few sets where you can say within a few years, like, they became, like, me- like more meta-defining than they were on release. And ABPI is one of those sets where after the Wonder Woman rules changes, um, there was like several things from this set that like became more important than they were on drop. And then this set itself like had rares and uncommons that were being played in like high competitive stuff. Like, you know, not like, you know, in a way where it was interesting or anything, but um, yeah, there's people that were running like uh, astronomer and gardener and people that were running uh, i don't think Etri ever saw ever saw his day in the sun but like medusa definitely got you played know. quite a bit um let's see voyager definitely made like a lot of like popper teams were specifically just built out of this set alone because like there's so much good stuff yeah. in this set and even the today Crystal you could probably voyager. still play most of this i mean like medusa was like the reason g popper basically became commander yeah much you know my set that I think aged the best over time is the Captain America 2011 set because it is the set that has gotten the most legacy cards now, which is wow. kind of wild. So there's, I think, five. I believe this is Human Torch, Invisible Woman, Modoc, and Dark Star, and Ursa Major. There's five. I think that's all of them but yes yeah, like a ton of legacy cards or at least to me a noticeable amount of legacy cards on the captain america set plus I think the sculpts super rares at the very least really hold up they're really cool yeah. that baron strucker's sculpt is still the best baron strucker with huge hydra loco behind him up an x in the tube uh the captain america and the ice is really cool all of them are just six set yeah there's a little bit of bias in there it wasn't a good set at the time, mind you. It was a really bad set at the time. Power creep for it was pretty rough. You know? But I think it's aged really well, just for the sheer amount of like legacy cards that are coming out of the Captain America 2011 set. It really did have like they went out like all out on like. There's not like a weak, uh, eh? No, not not really like a weak uh, super rare in that set. Human Torch kind of got bubbles. a purpose. Invisible yeah. woman, like bullets being blocked by an invisible shield. Squirrel girl, maybe like the weakest with her little stump that has Monkey Joe on it. 
Right. Uh, Kitty Pride literally phasing through like a computer. Really cool. Zemo I really like that on one a lot. Castle Wall. Baron Strucker, yeah, with like the giant Hydra logo, Red Skull. Maybe uh, Quasar and Maelstrom got like some cool effects going yeah. on. I think Scorpio might be the weakest. He's just sort of vibing by the Scorpio key, whatever. That's true. But he is like in a weird, awkward kind of like. All the other pose. super rares all look really cool. We got like Dirk Anger in that set, which is hilarious. Yeah. I really this is probably my set with my favorite LEs in the all time. Dirk Anger. We get yeah. a yeah successful Dirk Anger. We get Bob, Agent of Hydra, the only version of Bob, like the you know Deadpool sidekick. A fun like Red Guardian that works with Black Widow, and we get a Nick Fury LMD. I love the Nick Fury LMD. Oh I yeah, really I forgot cool. about the LMDs. Yeah, I really like the LEs for this set. It was so fun. Man, so fun. Getting some new LMDs would be really fun. It's uh, I can't. Like, I think Fury we had LMD some in. Uh, like, like I obviously, probably had some in Nick Fury yeah, Agents of Shield, Shield, but we need some that are like those them. Deadpool ones, or not Deadpool? Excuse me, the Joker ones that blow up the Las Vegas Strip. Because so, the LMDs blow up. Usually, like, yeah, we need that's what we really need. Those are cool, okay. But all right, set were I'm oh, sorry, which set was the most fun to play and in what format? Uh, let's okay. see, most fun to play and in what format? Um, just going off of like my memory, so like War of Light, and like all almost all of these are sealed because I think that's one of the more fun formats to play in. So, sealed War of Light really fun adw i remember being extremely fun and sealed there's like very little that you could pull that would just completely disrupt it I think like chase hulk was probably like the biggest one um the mighty thor in sealed if there was like a blue flame bland like ban if like no one else pulled like if no one pulled you to mind uh the mighty thor in sealed was actually tons <laughs> of fun yeah i actually that was like one of the few times i pulled off uh like thor's like minus six or whatever, the Thor. Oh, yeah. yeah, uh, that's one of the few times I ever pulled that off was in sealed, and it was, it was dirty because uh, it was like down to just Thor versus uh, Groot Thor, and Groot Thor did not have Indomitable, so like he he didn't have any willpower at all, and uh, the Thor Odinson did his minus. It's a minus eight. He starts with three, but it's a minus eight. So for the rest of the game, as long as he's in the, on, on the map, when an opposing character would get an action, it gets two action tokens instead. So yeah, the Groot Thor just started taking pushing damage like every time he did anything. Didn't matter what he did, just oh, push man. damage clear, push damage clear. It felt like so dirty. But like the reverse would be true nowadays where he wouldn't take push damage and then he'd also clear action tokens on a three through six because he's a giant. So it's true. That, Ooh. you know, if we replayed... Uh, me and good old me and Tom, if we replayed that final battle of that game, it might turn out different now because, yeah. Uh, but no, that was a set that I just, I loved playing in sealed and I played probably the most sealed for that set because we had three venues going at the time and it was just like an awesome set to play sealed in everything. It didn't feel like unbalanced because you could pull high costed like rares and, uh, on commons and stuff like that and you could do stuff against most of the chases like the chases weren't usually actually that great um it was mostly just like if somebody pulled unimind and also an eternal you were just hosed yeah that's just done in sealed when you get like the meta figure out of the set and then what it like because sometimes oh man i got the meta figure but it's like not actually good in seal mind on the other hand was yeah he was in Find it possible to take down and see. Well, and it didn't help that like Thena was one of the commons, so I mean, yeah, it's like one of the best options he could get for a blue flame was one of the most likely to pull. Easy, yeah. The set I had the most fun with Secret Wars Battle World, specifically in the battle royale format. I bid clean an entire weekend at Rocktober just doing the BRs there, which was not great because they didn't really drop any good LEs. It wasn't like BRs at Worlds where you actually get something really good and like worth your time and money. Um, yeah. so I basically spent that entire weekend in second or third and like losing at Battle Royals and almost battle royaling myself out of house and home just playing BRs at that Rocktober, but it was so fun. I loved Secret Wars Battle Worlds for Battle Royals. It was so cool. It worked really well. Sides, there was just one figure that you would pull that was like the fun ruiner and that oh, is his name. 
was he could choose something to see through. Oh, um, gosh, he, the, he had the, the glowy fists, um, the glowy fist that the, the ball would be removed. Yeah, he was I'm a super rare it. man. Is it? Uh, WBW, where does his name? Regent. Oh, Regent. Regent yeah. Sucks. Yes. Yeah. And he points. also have um, like one of the, the battle world like Baron of like a certain yeah, battle he's world. Got Baron player. of Battle World, uh, I believe, for any battle world keyword. Yeah. Jeez. Any battle world keyword. Yeah, it was rough. He sucked. He sucked to play against. He was super not fun. But like all the rares were pretty cool. Like you could make a decent team out of rares. If you got Iron Goblin, he was solid. Captain Marvel. So if you maybe got uh you know there were some decent ones there. Red Wolf was really fun. At the very least, I loved Archon. Archon was hilarious in a battle royale format. I loved that. Archon the utterly lost. For rares, there was a lot of like Regent was like a, okay, no fun will be had this game, but Big Boss Hill, Dino Thor, even like Witch Queen LaFay, Thanos, Nick the Fury, they were all super fun. Destroyer Thor didn't feel overpowered in it, even though he's an eleven for five damage, which is insane. None of the chases, except maybe Black Panther, felt overpowered. That was, like, again, a super fun game I played was I got chased Black Panther, and then it was this other guy's, like, regent, and I hit the six on Super Senses when he hit me with a precision strike attack, like, for the win. Oh, and, like, everybody in the table was so happy because it was, like, the first battle royal I actually pulled a chase in and won and got to keep it. So that was nice. Uh, so yeah, like man, Secret Wars Battle World, such a fun battle royal set. Alex Wilder, uh, evil man, Alex Wilder, can't stand him. But, yeah, literally such a fun battle royal set. Loved Secret Wars. Right, Which set. Were you most surprised in either a good way or a bad way? Which set was I most surprised in? It what surprised you the most in either a good way or a bad way? Oh. So this is where we finally get back to Joker's Wild. Uh, Joker's uh, Wild no. actually surprised me um, in a good way. Like so, uh, when I first came back to the game, um, I was playing. Like I started picking up boosters, and Joker's Wild was one of like the sets that I like finally started like grabbing some more of and stuff. And uh, yeah, like I was actually surprised by the fact that it was like decent. And by decent, I, I get what you're saying, where you say, like, a lot of the cards that should have done more or been, like, higher costed and stuff, or were higher costed, were bad. So, a lot of the good, uh, like, Batman's cadre of villains or whatever you want to call it, like, Bane, just, like, bad for 105 points. Man Bat was kind of bad for 55 points. Uh, Clayface, kind of bad for 75 points. But um, I really liked the the cheap like JSA stuff. So like the Adam, um, I thought the Adam was like really solid. Uh, obviously, I played a lot of that uh, Green Lantern, um, that Super Air Green Lantern. I played a lot of like the Penguin. Um, Mister Freeze was kind of trash too, but I played a lot of the Penguin. I played a lot of uh, a lot of like Haha Joker. I played a lot of like certain like random like pieces here and there so yeah that's the the one i played the most of i guess nice that really surprised me was superior foes of spider-man it was the first set after the card change which is pretty notable in my opinion and i was just i was pretty impressed by it the uh what are they called sinister syndicate were really fun to play in that set there were a handful of like neat generics we got a gosh what was it a pro registration generic as the cape killer which is really interesting your foes of spider-man great super rares in that set devil dino being like the standout oh, yeah. awesome baller super rare the chases being just very cool you know so super spider-man or it's not your foes of spider-man also like the handstand spidey was an iconic version of spider-man there for just a really long time which was really cool so appreciated that as well yeah if i was a spidey love that set very surprising to me see not all spider-man hater see you guys oh also stilt man <laughs> wow such a cool oh, yeah. original yeah, ability stilt, stilt man had i was so baller stilt, stilt man. man was really hey. solid uh, yeah all right next up which sets had the most impact on the game of hero clicks uh, i think that's like pretty simple but i just put 
any set that dropped a resource, ID cards, equipment, um, pretty big impact on the game. And then obviously, I think like the biggest is the the Hammer of Thor set bringing the game back because yeah. the game did not exist for a while, and then uh, suddenly it did again. So yeah, I got to go Wonder Woman on this one. Wonder Woman, yeah, had that is huge, probably one of the biggest impact. It is for obviously in fresh like recent memory, of course, but I just think for how controversial it was, for how much it totally shook up how Hero Clicks was played. Gotta get it to Wonder Woman. The biggest impact on the game. And, and which set do you hate to play against? Ah, someone's playing such and such figure. How rabble rabble, how dare they? So, <laughs> Calder alluded to this a little bit, but uh, I, there's not a lot of sets that I would not play against. One set that I definitely wouldn't play against, though, is the Black Widow movie set. <laughs> it's like, if yep. you were going to say, like, you have to play against X and it's only that set. Black Widow movie set is the one set that I will absolutely not play against. Not play with. Like I just I played against it enough. I just do not like it. Not a huge fan. Yeah. Not gonna like win me over kind of thing. Gotcha. I I do agree with you there. I really do hate playing against the Black Widow movie set. It's just so unfun, specifically just to chase Black Widow. She's so incredibly unfun to play against. I just hate it. I'm going to go with World's Finest, though, specifically because Mary Marvel's in this set, and she's actually the worst. And I hate playing against Mary Marvel. Can't stand her. Don't like her. Hate her a little bit. Hate her a lot a bit. Thank you. No, thank you, Mary Marvel. Please feel free to never exist ever again literally ever again very cool and those are all the questions we have from malcolm if you guys want to ask us a question at any ooh, ah, point in time at any time ever feel free to email us at dialishforheroclicks at gmail.com send us a message on facebook like malcolm does we're dialishforheroclicks on facebook same thing you can send us a message on twitter if you want to do that we're dialh4 that's the number four on twitter Typically, we'll usually have a lot of Patreon questions that is in our Discord. We have a great Discord community. A lot I of absolutely snappers love it. in there. A lot of snappers. A lot of snappers in the Discord community. So, you know, watch out, baby. You get snapping. Get oh. snapped up. Alex just lost to a, an Ultron. I'm exact, telling you, that the Ultron exact build- deck you were talking about with Patriot, yeah. Kazar, oh. Blue Marvel, and then Ultron. And then both locations fill with Ultron drones that are at... Oh, one's got Shocker. Never mind. Okay, yeah, he's got no abilities. That yeah, I was like, why is one... There, he looks a lot like an Ultron drone. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> he just... It's funny that <laughs> you Ultron mentioned Ultron team's that. so good. It's so awesome. It's so fun. But I need Patriot. Oh, Eat him. It is wild that he lost that, though, because... Dang. pretty stacked. Let me, let me look at this. Look at this. Yeah, he uh, he had he dropped oh, Kazar, he block. onslaughted him, he had Ant Man. Oh, wow. Obviously, he won the middle, but oh, lost the side. The drones won both sides. Yeah, wild. I bet if he would had uh, his face Blue Marvel instead of Kazar, he would have done it because he's got two uh, non one cost yeah. cards in his right lane, and that would help him out. I there. stopped doing the Kazar because he's good for a turn four, but like I just hate. I don't know. And maybe, like, Dude, not to anymore. Alex's credit against uh, Killmonger, I do hate setting up, like, a solid line of yeah. stacks One and then stuff. somebody Killmongering and just, like, wiping it. Because that's, like, something you just can't really... You can kind of plan for it, but, like, you really can't, depending it's on... It's just kind like, of your poop on your day, though. Like, Killmonger's yeah. just like, all right, well, you're done. And if your name's Shy Guy and you're listening to us on Marvel Snap yeah. Radio... Uh, Tell us about your Ultron build, I guess, because it looks exactly Dude. like what Calder mentioned. <laughs> yeah, you steal my idea somehow. Somehow. Build, I haven't actually had the chance to We haven't to, released like, this episode, play. but we technically yeah. said this before you did this. Did before we knew this existed, so yeah. I'm, I got you beat, dog. Yeah. Yeah, and if you want to support the show, you can do so by, honestly, really big support, more so than just giving us money on Patreon, which we do love, which helped us out a ton this year and able to travel and do all sorts of cool videos. If you want to write a review of the podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen to the show, reviews super help out the podcast. Five-star reviews are huge. 
well, that gets it shown more and more people will listen because of the review. It'll get pushed more in the algorithm and stuff. Or support us on YouTube by subscribing to the YouTube channel, hitting the bell notification. I know, I get it. I do this all the time, but seriously, that is, again, a huge help for us to get more traction on the videos. We make a lot of really cool, fun videos for you guys. We do a lot of world's coverage. But stay tuned. There's going to be some cool stuff coming out this week. Hopefully, there should be some Avengers Forever unboxings. Uh, we're, we apologize not being able to get those up to you like before this happened, but there are going to be some pretty cool Avengers Forever unboxings this week. I'll be going to the release day Avengers Forever, so I'll have some gameplay footage of sealed Avengers Forever this weekend, so the next Saturday, Sunday, etc. And there may or may not be a Avengers Forever pitch meeting this week. You might have to be on the lookout for. Yeah. Nice. Consider helping us out by subscribing, liking, leaving a review on Apple iTunes, Podbean, wherever you get this podcast. Thank you yeah. so much for listening. If you don't want to support us in that kind of a way, you yeah. can also support us by supporting those who support us. Uh, and that's by using code dial five. When you check out at coolstuffinc.com. Uh, currently cool stuff has the hellfire gala premium collection for $60. So 5% nice. will get you a 5% discount off of that. The dial five. I'm not going to do the math for you. They'll do it for you when you go to check right. out. Um, but it's not, it's not free shipping if you only buy $60 worth of stuff. Also, they're going to be splitting the Hellfire Gala. So if there's only one specific figure that you want, and you want to do that, they'll probably charge like $10 each or something. But if you really only want a lot like of Polaris here, Sunfire maybe. or something, yeah, possibly. Yeah. It might just be a lot of like free TK people. Um, but, uh, the, the premium collection does come with a cool PAC and a cool yeah, little box cool. and stuff. Also, Avengers Forever, they've got all of the singles listed, so probably not this Wednesday, but you can expect it like sometime this week or early next week. Singles will be going live, and then also they still have cases, they still have bricks, uh, token packs, and obviously uh, single boosters available for sale as well. So yeah, find some combination to get yourself a free $100 shipping mark and then use code dial five to get yourself 5% off of that. But yeah, do that at cool stuff, okay. com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including the latest hero click singles and sealed products. Betrayals. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how they, six how people humor? think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Epic trail.